I'm Dr. Anthony Malou for Vise and Faces in Cornea and Oculoplastic Surgery in Sydney and welcome to this video, video edition. It's a very special one to me, probably one of the highlights of my career, which I'm going to share with you. It's really quite a moving story, but there's many lessons from it. And it's called Make the Blind See for a Reason, as you will see. Now, firstly, to qualify. Not all blind people can be made to see. There are many different causes of blindness. This gentleman had a cause that was amenable to very complex reconstructive surgery. And he's had an amazing outcome. It's exceptionally moving to take somebody who cannot see at all and restore their vision. Now, a bit of background. This gentleman had a long standing problem, multifactorial, so I'm not going to go into different causes, but let's say there are three causes for something. Generally, if you have one cause and you fix it, things get better. If you have two causes, you run into problems. Three causes, you've got chaos. So he had three nasty causes for him losing vision and we couldn't fix all of them. So we were sitting on him for a long time and holding his vision. He could sort of see the top letter of the chart and then suddenly got an acute nasty infection that ate into the front of his eye and then went inside the eye. It wasn't a simple infection. It was a fungal infection and you get a fungus in your only eye the natural treatment that we would usually recommend is to remove the eye. The problem is behind the front where he had the infection, it was a normal eye. Give it a day or two and it would go in and destroy it. So we had to move literally in minutes. The other eye was blind. He's not young. You imagine getting into your eighties and losing all your sight. It's pretty much a death sentence. So, we did some very heroic reconstructive surgery to get the infection under control, but it scarred up the whole front of his eye. And you will see what that looks like. So he can't see, he comes out of hospital and cannot see. Pretty devastating. You're seeing one day and within a couple of days, you're blind. So what did we do? We ummed and ahed and went through all different treatment regimes. And in the end, he had to pluck up the courage to go through extensive surgery. His other eye was blind. But what he needed, he needed the front of the other eye on what was left of his sighted eye. And that's what I did. So I removed one eye, took the front off it, removed the contents and put an implant in. And then I took the front of one eye and I put it onto the other to reconstruct the eye. And that's what I'm going to show you here. So let's have a look. All right, so here we see the patient and you'll see I'm actually operating on his non-sighted eye. You can't see, it looks normal, it looks completely normal. But what I'm cutting there is a line of the eye called the conjunctiva. You'll know that when people say conjunctivitis. And that lining there has got very critical stem cells. You will have heard of stem cells. Stem cells are, you know, people will shout them all the time, but he's got stem cells. So I'm taking the white of the eye, the clear part of the eye and the stem cells all in one go. And sadly, what is structurally a normal eye behind, I'm then going to remove. Now, I won't show you the removal. It's a bit gory for some people. So I'm only going to show you taking the front of the eye. Look how easily it just zips off. There it is. Bang, like a zipper. Inside there, there's a lens inside the eye that you can see. And that lens is a previous cataract operation and it's moved. Sometimes cataract lenses do move. His has moved. And um, you'll see the lovely colored part of the eye, the iris. And I'm going to remove all of that contents and it will be gone. So this around the iris is the ciliary body that makes the fluid in the eye, and that's all exposed. Inside there is what's left of the jelly inside the eye and the retina. It will all be gone. All right, so we'll move on to the next eye. So look at that, literally it's a mess. This is his only sighted eye. I put a ring on it to support it, and that's stitched in place. It's called the Fluoringa ring. So, and now I start the process of removing what is some remnant to the front of the eye. I have tried to use a donor tissue to transplant there. There's some stitches there, it just didn't work, it failed. And literally it is the proverbial dog's dinner. Take that off and here's the new tissue over the front. And I'm trimming it to fit it into place. So here it is, you've got to look after it and I'm slowly stitching into place. And in the end, it just takes time. You stitch, you remove it, you change stitches, you add more, you remove some, you reposition some, you fill up the eye. There's a bit of blood in there, but it's just a slow process of restitching this eye. And we keep going and going and going until it's done. Yes, he's asleep, he has a general anaesthetic, 
and he's paralyzed so that there's full control over the patient by the anesthetist. So we, we keep going until it's all sealed in and that's stitching the white of the eye back together. Um, if you go too far and be too aggressive, you can actually kill the eye and the eye will literally uh, never come back to life. So then we, the, I've got to stitch the stem cells back together. And here you go, you can see me stitching the stem cells back onto the lining of his eye, which had none. And we need those healthy stem cells to create a lining so that he can see. Without that lining, he will not see. Um, and so I'm stitching those stem cells back together. And let's move on. And once that's all done, I then place a membrane over the eye. This membrane is called amniotic membrane. The amniotic membrane comes from placenta. We have another video of this, stitching a placenta onto your eye. And I do a double layer of amniotic membrane for a reason in this patient. Now, it doesn't stay there. In fact, you have to take it out. It can cause problems, but that membrane is critical. It has growth factors and it really helps the eye to come together. I'm reclosing the lid. This was a partial closure that he had before surgery. I opened it up, so I'm reclosing that. And you can see me restitching it back together again. And I'm restitching the other side as well. So it's all closed down, but he still has an opening and I don't want that opened either. So we do a temporary closure. The previous one's permanent. Here's a temporary closure. It's got some little plastic um, lugs there to hold it all in place. And now the eye's temporarily closed. And now we have a waiting game. Um, he's on no drops, nothing. We just close the eye down and we wait. And how long do we wait? We wait for two weeks. So it's all bated breath. Uh, it says one week post up there, but it's actually two weeks. So two weeks after surgery, that's what his eye looks like. For most people, it looks like a normal eye, and it is. I didn't know if he was going to see after this. I didn't know what the back of the eye was like. Nothing. I was frightened. And so was he. He put his whole life, his wife was waiting patiently. He was frightened. I was frightened. I opened it up, and that's what it looked like. However, what was fascinating to see was when we opened it up, was to see him pick up his phone. The first thing he did was he picked up his phone and he read the time. Now this video I'm gonna show you wasn't the time he did it, we did it a bit later. That was quite a moving experience, so we didn't record that. But just to show you, here he is. Reading time off the phone, hit it. 103. Fantastic. And there you go. He went from blind to reading the time on his phone, and he even now reports at two weeks after reading surgery time. that he can read number plates. It's fascinating. What's his next request? He wants to return home to Austria for a few weeks to see his family. And the reality is he can do it. Um, he has a lot of drops that we're using on the front of the eye, and we cross our fingers and hope that he can take this to his grave. He shouldn't reject it, it's his own tissue, so he doesn't need any immune suppressant therapy. Overall, this was a very heroic thing to do. Um, I was really honoured to do the whole lot myself um, and absolutely thrilled and moved by the outcome. Um, it's not often I get to do this, but I have to say that if, uh, if I had to choose an operation to do for people, this would be it. Um, it's, very, it's really quite moving. Uh, it's not unfortunately something that everyone is going to benefit from, but in certain cases where it does work, it's wonderful. So thanks for watching. I'm Dr. Anthony Maloof of Eyes and Faces and Cornea and Oculoplastic Surgery in Sydney. And thanks for sitting out this video on making the blind see.